All right, 94.9 WDKB. I'm Sean Lowe. It's time to record a the next installment of our SBDC Small Business Development Center webinar series. It's the first one of 2022. I'm joined by Dr. Jock Samis from the Small Business Development Center and also Justin Lowe. Justin, thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure, folks. Thanks for having me. All right, Dr. Jock, I'm going to let you get us started here and get us uh, running off in the right direction. All right. Well, that's going to be a challenge, but we're going to give it a shot, right, Sean? <laughs> yes, hey, we will. So, you know, Justin, I've always found you to be the sales guy, the guy who knows all that kind of stuff. And with this, the marketplace the way it is, we're always looking, or our clients are always looking to increase sales and find customers. So broad strokes, what could you tell us about that? Uh, well, I, sales is for me, simple. It's, it's one of the things it's talking, right? I mean, it's getting out and getting in front of people and finding what it is. Um, as I kind of coined it recently, it's really about the three no's, know your audience, know your product and know yourself, right? So those are really kind of the three things that we always try to make sure we talk and cover. Once you get that, the law of attraction almost will always work. I have not really seen it not work out there where, if you're putting the right energy out there and you know who you're going for, they will find you. If you can't find them, they're going to find you as long as you're putting that effort in. So that's, I mean, that would be for me, the broad strokes of it. I mean, there's ways to get to the details of that, but I'm going to let you tell me how far down the rabbit hole, because I am a trainer by nature, so I can go <laughs> and talk forever. And you know what, Justin, since you said that, why don't you explain a little bit about what it is that you do? Uh, yeah, so I am... Um, I'm a trainer by heart and by nature. I have been a trainer since 1995. I go around and talk to companies about all sorts of things. Sales, most definitely one of them. Tech is another part of it. I don't know how we can get around life anymore without saying that we don't do tech. I mean, unless everyone is walking to work and not using a cell phone and, and not listening to the radio station. I mean, we're all doing tech to some degree in one way or the other. So those are really my two big components. But yeah, I've been a trainer for years. I'm also John Maxwell certified, which means I get to coach you on personal and professional growth, which is what I've been doing a lot lately with that. So, And speaking of growth, that beard is really kind of growing. <laughs> I knew I knew there was going to be a beard comment. We were talking off air before we started this about that beard. When it came on, we were like, "Whoa, Justin, where did you? How long did it take?" We had more questions about the beard than we did about business stuff. But the beard looks nice, Justin. So, Justin, you know, you said know the product, and that was K N O W, not N O W, not N O. Know the products. Okay, so know your products, know your customer, know yourself. I'm going to ask the, the very strange question, which one of this three-legged stool is the most important? Or do you think of first? Uh, you know what? It kind of varies for me. It all I think it depends on the people that you're talking to. I, I think the first two, I think the, the, the two biggest, I don't know if they can flip-flop on either way, but I would say know yourself and know your customer. I think are the two biggest. Um, I would tend to go and I'll do candor probably about know your customer first, just for the fact that we need to know how to communicate with them. John Maxwell has a, uh, a very good book that says uh, um, everyone communicates, few connect. And that's really because it's all about us talking and not about probably less about us listening and understanding who our clientele are. So for me, that'd probably be the first one. Although I will say a lot of times, I watch too many of us all the time go down the rabbit hole and start chasing things or going down skill sets that we are not good at doing. And we keep, you know, running into walls, right? I mean, we have these big permanent scars on our forehead because we keep running head first into walls. And that's because we don't know ourselves. So, I mean, they're, they're kind of like a yin and yang scenario, but I would probably put customers first because if we don't know how to talk to them, we're not getting anywhere. Yeah, I, I teach um, a lot of college students and I teach a lot of entrepreneurs and I always ask them, what's the most important thing in any business? And of course, they'll say money or a business plan or good operations uh, or a good product. Yeah. The majority of the time, no one mentions the customer. And I say to them, unless you could find someone who's willing to take money out of their pocket and give it to you without you resorting to violence, then you really, you know, that's a right. customer, you know, and the violence thing is needed to be put in there because there are times that you could get it that way. So <laughs> right. 
I mean, how do people find customers nowadays without the technology that you mentioned? Uh, well, I mean, it's how I met both of you, right? I mean, to me, that was one of the best things to do. Find those networking events in your area. Find those small business environments. Find that referral base that you can grow out of. Um, Sean and, and Dr. Jock, I've met both of you at a Jekyll Chamber event at one point in time. And I think those events are always great to be out there. You build the relationships, you learn who they are. Even if I don't do business directly with either one of you, I have implanted certain conversational points with you. And when you run across somebody and go, oh, I just met this great person. His name is Justin and he knows how to talk. <laughs> he knows how to sell. <laughs> he knows how to do whatever. He knows how to grow a beard, whatever it may be. He's going to be able to help you with what's going on, right? I mean, one of the things I find fascinating, you said not tech, but um, everybody remember Foursquare? Now, I know I'm the big old nerd in the room, so some of you are going to say yes, some of you are going to say no. But I don't know, think I ever used it, but I remember it. Right, same. The power of Foursquare was not me logging in and becoming the mayor of Tom and Jerry's or whatever it may be. The power it was, was the inferred referral that I got from that. I know Dr. Jock, I know Sean, who went there. It must be good. They've been there five times in the last 10 weeks. I got to go try this out, right? So that implicit referral by building those relationships, I know who you are, is always, I think, is a much stronger business strategy than most. You know, and I have to apologize. When you said four square, I thought you were talking about the little game where there's four squares and there's a ball. So, yeah, I, I, I missed all of that. I'm sorry. I'm really so, sorry. In short, four square was a nice little app where you got to check into locations. Uh, for those who don't know what we're talking about, again, I'm the nerd. So it was a nice little app. And if you checked in enough times, you became the mayor, which some people reward you with gift cards and things like that. But that's not why they did it. They did it because now you had a referral based business without having to pay for it. It was really something that was kind of like Yelp before there was a Yelp, yeah. you know, in, uh, in an implied sense, because, because you were there, you were assuming that it was a good place because they kept seeing you at these particular locations and they were friends with you. They assumed that that was a good place to go because you had been there four or five times. Yeah. So that's like a, a positive review without even doing a review, just showing that you were there. Yeah, absolutely. So Justin is just showing up. A big part of sales? Oh, yeah. It really, really is. Um, I uh, So I'm a big fan of DISC, and we'll probably talk about that a little bit later, but I'm a big, big fan of DISC behavioral assessments. And I will also teach that according to, to networking events. And some people will sit there and say, well, all those wallflowers that sit in the room aren't doing anything. And while there is some truth to that, they have taken one huge step. As you just asked, they showed up, right? They took that first step for getting there. They broke past their fear. They broke past their shyness. They broke past whatever. Now, eventually, they're going to have to do more things. But as anybody knows, if you're at a networking event or if you're at a group outing or you're at a sales meeting, whatever it is, taking that first step is going to lead to another one. It's that old domino strategy, right? You push one down, the rest are going to fall with it because you've started that process. So I'm always a big fan of showing up. Now, I always want you to show up with an intention and some goals. But as long as you show, I'm going to, I'm going to reward you for it early on. And then we'll take those next steps and get past you just showing up. Yeah, I've found in most networking events, people don't know how to network. You know, the... <laughs> They, they stand there, they talk to their friends, then they come home and they're like, yeah, that was a bomb because I didn't talk to anybody new. Well, it does take a little effort. I will tell you, the first time I met Sean in person, we were ma wearing masks. Do you rem Sean, do you remember this at all? Uh, I don't remember the event, but I do remember meeting you, but I didn't, and the second time I saw you, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so I walked up, it was in uh, Ferrandez. That's right. Right. So I walked up to him and I'm like, Sean, because, you know, with a mask on, Sean pretty much looks the same. Let's just call it spade and spade. There's like, still there's still a forehead here from here to here, whether you have a mask on or not. I'm like, Sean, jocks and meese. And he's like, go. Oh. And he pretended that he knew who I was. And when I walked away, I think it finally dawned on him. But, you know, that was, you know, people need to get out of their comfort zone. 
as far as I'm concerned, with networking, or else it's just not going to be good. Oh, I, I would agree. And I always laugh because you're right. I think most people don't know how to it. I, I've got, you know, a couple different categories of people. My my all-time favorite is the blackjack dealer, right? You get a card, you get a card, you get a card, you get a card. <laughs> Stay. I'll tell you. We'll it, see if it, it works. It, it's funny you say that because one of the best networking events and a sales event that I ever went to, a guy um, who I knew, and just I just knew him kind of okay, but not a lot. He took me to a networking event in his part of the world, which was Delaware. I lived in Philadelphia. And he brought me over to people and he introduced me and he said, hey, Justin, this is Jock. Jock, this is Justin. This is what Justin does. This is what Jock does. And he walked away for five minutes. Yep. Then he came back after five minutes and he brought me over to Sean. He said, Sean, this is Jock. Jock, this is Sean. It was the best experience I've ever had because you were focused. You know, you had something to talk about. You got that warm introduction. And what's funny is you talked about the, uh, the Calp Chamber. They did a speed dating networking event that I thought was dynamite yeah. because they throw you into a breakout session. You have to talk to that person. It's not like you can, oh, you know, oh, there's somebody over there I want to talk to. It's a well, it's a ripping the Band-Aid off kind of scenario. Like, you know, whether or not you wanted to be there, you're there now. Now's your chance. Take advantage of it because in 37 seconds, you're moving on to the next right. person. So Exactly right. Yeah, it helps you stay intentional, right? It helps you do that. And to, to, to Jack's point, it also gets you out of your comfort zone because you got no choice. You can't pause for 60 seconds and say <laughs> the silence will be there. But I think it also keeps you focused, too, when you do like a speed networking thing like that, um, especially if it's not something you're used to doing. It is good for people to go because it gives them that chance. They, they don't have to meet with somebody for very long, but they can get their elevator speech out there. They can exchange a business card and move on. And they've made a connection there in, in just that short amount of time. Sean, was that true that you had a lot of experience that with speed dating? No. <laughs> no, that wasn't okay. Nope. No experience or no success stories there. Uh, <laughs> All right, moving right along. I mean, so, if you want to, let's go down the <laughs> rabbit hole of dating. Oh, no, let's not. Let's not do that. <laughs> well, you know, Justin, let's just kind of do a little segue then. If we're talking about dating, I mean, that's about sales, right? Sure, absolutely. So do you have any advice for people like Sean that are looking to date that, you know, should sell themselves? It always well, comes back to me somehow. It always comes back. Well, here's the thing. It will be kind of a tie-in, not kind of a tie-in. I go back to what you were talking about earlier as far as that guy that introduced you, right? He was able to introduce you to someone else because he knew about you. And most likely he knew something about you because he asked some basic questions. And my favorite set of questions is what I, well, not I, but I call it all the time, Ford, right? Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. It takes not more than 60 seconds to get those questions out. And once you get those questions out, I know things about you. You know, if we're talking dating, whatever it is, you got, you know, we're going to know who your family is. We're going to know what you do, if it's worth dating or not dating. We got that stuff that's going in there. And now you have conversation points. Now I have things we can talk about. Maybe I can relate. If not, at the very least, to your point, I say, oh, you know what? Tom down the road right there, he has the same hobby you do. You guys should really talk, right? Simple questions will build a relationship and a bond, an implicit bond before you actually even realize it. So Justin, go through Ford again, a little slower and <laughs> give us a couple of questions that would go so, along with that. Yeah. F Stay is family. So, you know, are you married? Do you have family? Do you have kids? Where do you live? Where are you from? Right. Where's your family or you originate from? You know, those are those simple kind of family type questions. Occupation. What do you do for a living? You do for a living. <laughs> Do you want to do anything else? What's your what's your goals for your job? Right? Things like that. Recreation, you know, what do you do for a pastime? Do you, you know, what sports do you like? What uh, hobbies do you do? Um, you know, where do you take your family out on vacations? You know, where do you go? Things like that. And then dreams are those goals questions, right? And I love this question because it's always getting them to think a little bit beyond themselves, especially when you're at a networking event is Kind of like I said earlier, do you like your job? What what would you want to do when you're done? What would that retirement look like for you? What what would you do other than this? Right? What would be those things? How would you get to it? When is your goals? What timeline do you have? All right? Just simple questions like that for those questions will get a lot done. 
very, very quickly. And much like being in an interview in a company, my goal always at a networking event is to do less of the talking and more of the listening. So if I get to get those questions, which aren't, do you have a job? Yes. <laughs> do you like your job? <laughs> yes. All right. It's not those. It's <laughs> always the how, when, where's questions that lead to bigger conversation. Points. So open-ended. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think Sean, it really, you... I'm sorry, Sean, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, you know, it really is a lot like dating uh, to an extent because in sales, you're building relationships and those relationships that you build make the work dynamic work much easier. If you have a really tough relationship just in dating, it's probably not going to work. You know, if you're going in there and just trying to sell something to somebody all the time and they know that they're like, oh, here comes that guy, you know, here comes that salesperson again. They don't like that. But if they, if you walk in there and you've got an established relationship because you're not in there trying to sell something to somebody all the time and you've got that established relationship, it's like, hey, Justin, how are you today? How's the, you know, Hey, did you go boating this weekend or, or, you know, because you know those things and now you're not in there selling something. And then you may say, oh, you know, I know you came in here for a reason. What do you got today? You know, and I may have something to show you or sell you and I may leave it with you and I may not. Or maybe I'm like, oh, maybe you own a restaurant and I just, I'm just here for lunch today. You know, but it's those relationships. It, it, it really is a lot like dating in sales. If you're a salesperson or you own your own business developing those relationships, the people you feel comfortable working with, those are the people that you're going to go to Absolutely. when the time is right. Absolutely. Sean, I, I was going to go off on a different path, but that was good. I like what you did there. Well, let's, well, let's go down your path. <laughs> I, I was going to say, Sean, what are your dreams? What do you want to do after this? <laughs> there, there, there's something after this? <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. I mean, really, honestly, you know, and I'm being 100% honest, since I was a little kid, this is all that I've ever wanted to do. I mean, really, um, being the program director and a morning show host for your hometown radio station, it's what I've always wanted to do. Since I was, I mean, literally a little kid listening to the radio in the car, I used to look at my parents and be like, I want to do that, you know, and... Um, unfortunately we just saw that, you know, a legend in the radio business on TV, WKRP in Cincinnati passed away. I mean, that was really like, I saw that on TV. I heard it on the radio. I was like that, if that's a job, you can do that. People will pay you to do that. That's what I want to do. So, I mean, I'm doing what I want to do. Good for you. Yeah. It's a good thing you didn't hear W O R W O L D, did you? That would have changed your whole <laughs> perception of what was going on. Very possible. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Justin, you mentioned DISC before and kind of explain what that's about and how that works with salespeople. Uh, so DISC is a behavioral assessment, it's a behavioral style. Um, long and short of the history of this, I'll go in really too deep in this. People for centuries have tried to evaluate personalities, behavioral profiles, something like that. And there's always been really four major characteristics. Um, well, Dr. William Marston, about in the 1950s, came out with the DISC version of this, which is dominance, influence, um, st uh, steady or stable, however you want to look at that, and compliance. These are the four quadrants. If you look at it in a quadrant, you have DISC that break down who we are, what we do, kind of why we react the way we do when we're talking to someone or something happens to us in a stressful situation. We can kind of explain what's going on with that stuff. And when I'm talking to you and, you know, Jock, you are more direct and you're just very chunked out. I don't want to come out and tell stories all day long because I've lost you almost at the very beginning. Whereas if you are an I, me and you telling stories all day long, talking with Sean, we tell stories, you know, we're going to last all day long and have this learning how to communicate or understanding why they did what they did is going to always help you do that. It goes as much for them as it does yourself, right? We also need to understand why we react the way we do. Why, why don't make me, don't tell me, Dr. Jock, I'm going to go meet you. It's a small business bureau. You're going to say, Justin, start creating task lists. I'm going to say, okay, but I'm a high eye. And high eyes, folks, <laughs> don't make us do task lists. Don't make us do spreadsheets. Don't make us do those things because it's too detailed for us. So I'll do them for about two weeks and then they stop because it's just not in my nature. It's going to stress me out. 
Um, whereas if you would make more of a C profile, who's a compliance one, who are those analyticals, they have task lists for their task list. You tell them to do a task list, you just made their day. It's Christmas for them all day long, right? Um, so looking at that, and we can go farther down. I don't want to go too deep if you don't want to go that way. But um, each one of us are built on all four characteristics, but we're driven by two, maybe three of them. And understanding those profiles and understanding who we are and why we react the way we react um, is always going to help you build and network better in those audiences, right? Going back to your scenario, right? The gentleman introduced you to someone else, thought you guys had a hobby that matched, but your profiles just were combative. And you went, okay, this is great, but that conversation stunk. It could have been not as it could have been just as simply as we didn't know how to talk to one another. We didn't know how to get that conversation started and to understand how to react to one another. So how do we figure that out on the fly, Justin? There's can really, we? there's really easy identifiers, right? I mean, it's really kind of funny. When you look at the disc, so D is a, draw, a dominance driver. People that are action takers are going to be very just go-getters. When they dress, they're dressing to impress, right? So I they're going to all of the, us have done that here today. Right. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we'll talk about that. Although I'm usually unusual. Like, so you can see mine here has got a little fabric to it. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I don't. So, I don't know what we're doing here right now. <laughs> <laughs> they um, so they'll dress to impress, but they'll also be very assertive, right? When they stand, they'll stand straight. They will stand almost aggressive in nature, because that's who they are. They're trying to get things done. They're just action takers. Eyes are you influencer. So they're the chatty folks. They're the ones that are probably laughing the loudest at the networking event. They're very handsy. They're going to talk with their hands. That um, I could stand for Italian too. Yeah, it can. Okay. <laughs> it can. They're also very flashy in their colors, right? So they're usually going to have bright colors. They're going to stick out, right? Um, for me, usually when I have shirts underneath my stuff, there's always color to it. Actually, when you guys ever see me at Network Converts, I'm probably using a red, blue, green, something. I'm not doing the black or the power colors. Typically, it's something different. S's are very, and again, we're very handsy, and we're also just very vibrant s's are also people people but they want to be behind the scenes so they're going to do the best they can to be neutral right their hands are always going to be in front of them very close they're going to be doing nothing that would be confrontational in nature and they're going to have very light blue light gray colors you can be very very neutral um c's try to hide <laughs> they try to hide um, in networking events. So when you look at them and you talk to them, they're going to have more browns or more colors that are going to blend into the surroundings a lot of times that are out there. You will have, um, uh, they'll be, again, very straight. Everything will be very organized, right? If they're wearing a tie, if it's crooked, they're, it's going to drive them nuts if they find out later, right? Things will be very detailed. They probably came with a clipboard and a piece of paper so they can write notes so they can remember what's going on. So usually, visibly, it's very easy to pick them out in, in, a, in a quick meta, method. All right, Justin, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm going to give you a scenario. And, Jock, you're probably going to think I'm nuts for doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you're at a networking event, and you see somebody there that you know 100% that you have, to, you have to get to know that person mm -hmm. more. But you know you don't like them. You, you know that your, your conflict, something's happened in the past, but now you're in a different role and you're looking at the person and you, you're like, I have to get to know that person. I've got to make this sale or I've got to make this relationship work. And, and you're not good at networking. <laughs> so you're terrible at networking. You have to network with somebody that maybe you don't care for. What's the best advice you can give somebody? Because you're going to come across those people in business, you know, some people you need to work with, but... Maybe you're you're not the most fond of, and you just don't know how to reach them. Some advice for people like that, because I'm sure that's something that happens a lot. And I think the the regular person would just be like, eh, "I'm not going to do it," but so you I, really need to. I learned this strategy in college, <laughs> and I call it the wingman strategy. Now, it's not what we're going to go down that strategy for, but it's it's literally what I called it because I would I lived in a fraternity for several years in college, and I we would go to bars afterwards. And I would not want to see the same people I saw every day because I already know what they're going to say. I want to meet someone else and go talk to them. Well, one of my friends came to me 
and said, dude, what are you doing? I said, well, I want to meet new people. And they go, okay, can I go with you? I said, yeah, sure. But I'm a high eye. So I don't remember names to save my life. So he's walking around with me and I didn't introduce him one time. <laughs> and he got pissed at me. He got pissed at me very hard. He wouldn't talk to me for about a day and a half. I said, I said, dude, what's up? He goes, dude, you didn't introduce me one time. I said, because I didn't know their names. And I told him, I said, dude, if I don't introduce you within the first 30 seconds, it's because I don't know the other person's name. Introduce yourself, interrupt, call me a jerk, do whatever you got to do and say, he's bad. Here's my name. I said, you've done two things. You saved my butt because now I know the name. And you got to be introduced and you still got to make fun of me for it. So, hey, you know, bonus all the way around. For me, it's the same strategy in networking events. If you know you got to get in there, have that wingman, have that person in there that's going to help diffuse any tension or anything that's in place there and help make that easier. I'll be honest with you. I, I've mentioned this a couple of times because I'm a chamber member for DeKalb. Our chamber head, I think, does a tremendous job with that. When he sees one of the things going out there, he knows how to bring that in and make that introduction and help get those things going into a smooth field. So having that ally that you're going with to get that introduction or to ease that conversation always makes it easy. All right, Jock, can I be your wingman? <laughs> always. Justin, do you remember his name? Who? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> you know, what's so funny is um, I think I'm good at remembering names and I'll meet somebody and I'll, you know, call them by name. And then my wife will say, that's not their name. You know, later on, I'm like, OK, we need a new strategy. And the strategy is if I don't mention the name, she will then introduce herself, make fun of me, which is fine. But then we both get to know the name. So that works for me. Sean, how much more time do we have? Uh, about uh, about four or five minutes. Okay. So, so uh, Justin, I know you like John. Ma I know you love John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Let's not even say like. You love John Maxwell. Great stuff on leadership, no doubt about it. Are there any books that you could recommend to the audience that are going to help us with increasing our sales or finding customers or retaining customers? Well, so the first book for me is always going to be what I mentioned earlier from Maxwell, which was um, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. Um, for me as a trainer, I've, I've been training for over 25 years. And I'll be honest, I consider myself amazing as a trainer. And then I read that book and went, eh, yeah, maybe well, there's some key points there I can fix and get a little bit better. And it wasn't a coincidence that shortly after people started saying, you really changed your training style. And, well, I didn't change my training style, but I did change how I communicated with you, right? I focused on you before I even got in front of the classroom. So perspectives changed a little bit. So that's always my favorite. Now, not a Maxwell book, but I met him at a Maxwell event, was a book by Dr. Robert Cialdini, um, C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I. -I. Uh, amazing book because it's, it's the book of influence. And he has, I think, six principles of influence that you can work in and talk to people. Two of my favorites in that book are the rule of reciprocity and the rule of micro commitments. I love the rule of reciprocity because so many of us do it and don't realize what we're doing, which makes it awesome because it's authentic, that it changes things out there. So let's go back to the networking conversation. I come out there and I meet you and I shake your hand and I give you a business card. Well, you give it to me out of obligation. That's the rule of reciprocity. But if we take that to a more authentic term and a more real value give, what I typically do after the event, when I meet someone new, I will give a handwritten note to that person saying, it was great to meet you. I loved hearing about X, you know, whatever the forward recreation or dream that came out to. And now I've been planning it in, and now they're looking to return the favor. So the rule of reciprocity essentially says this. You give them something of value, they are going to be inclined to give something of like value in return. So that value is different for everybody. And that's where so we get this, caught up. I'm, I'm sorry. Is this kind of like a quid pro quo kind of thing? That uh, you're uh, similar. expecting it? It's similar, as long as it's authentic, right? Because as soon as the authenticity, like if it's inauthentic, because you know if I give you this, you're going to give me back, 
as soon as that's been discovered, it's ruined. It's done. You'll never get it back. But yeah, so anybody ever watched The Big Bang Theory? Mm-hmm. So in short, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna do the 30 second round in here for this conversation. Um, what happened was you had a bunch of professors at a university, big nerds that were out there, and you had a waitress next door, and they all became friends. Well, the waitress told one of the heavy persons, his name is Sheldon, one of the heavy nerds in the room saying, I got a Christmas card, I'm going to give it to you. Well, he was pissed because I don't want to do this because now I'm socially obligated to give you something of kind in return, the rule of reciprocity. Well, fast forward, she comes over, gives him the gift. It's a napkin. So he looks at it like, oh, great, a napkin. This is worth time. Well, on the other side of it, Spock was written there. Star Trek Spock had signed. Well, he got all excited. And then what happened was he went to his room and gave like 100 baskets to her. He had bought all these different baskets and gave one of the same value. But that wasn't enough. He appreciated the present so much that the only way he knew how to repay it was to give her a hug. So the thing that's interesting, yes, it is quick bow crow, but what we got to remember is it's not dollar value for dollar value. It's value for value, and we all perceive value differently. Going back to the Ford, we have to know what each other wants and what our dreams are so you know what value to give in return. Very nice. All Sean, right. do we have time for him to describe the micro commitments or not really? You could do that, sure. All right, because, Justin, you mentioned the micro commitments. So micro commitments I love. Um I teach a lot of realtors in there and micro commitments are really simple. This is you want them to commit to something. So they many small things to make them believe they are who they are to make bigger commitments. So in short, one of the examples in the book was these people in California asked, could they put a small sign in their yard that says, keep, keep America green, something along those lines. Well, half the group said that they went to did it. Another group they didn't even go to, the kind of the, 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 the sample group, right? Well, the ones that said yes were most likely, were like 50% more likely when they asked them to put a bigger sign, like an obstructional sign in there. They said yes because they already believed who they were through the previous micro-commitment. So if we're in sales or we're doing these things and we can get them to say yes to smaller things, Hey, do you want to do lunch? Hey, do you want to go and let's do an event together, right? Small things like that. In the end, when you get them to believe who they are, and it's again, it's got to be authentic. It's not like, okay, I want to do these five things. So I'm going to get a bigger yes. Authentically, if you do this, you get small micro commitments. You will get bigger commitments because you've already implanted the yes in their head. And they're going to likely say yes more. Great. All right. I think that's a good thing to, to wrap things up with. Gentlemen, thanks Say for yes. joining us today. We appreciate it. Justin Leatherby, also Dr. Jock Samis, thanks for joining us on our Small Business Development Webinar Series, the very first one for 2022. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, thank Justin. You. All right. We'll find more at 949wdkb.com.